Okay, we're going to start off with a joke about how bad 2020 was because it's definitely not overdone and I'm definitely not tired of hearing it in every single video I watch on the internet. What's up everyone? So now that 2020 is over, we can chill, we can sit down, relax or not. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at what happened in the realm of technology throughout the past year, whether that be all the events that happened, interesting stuff that was released, all of it. It's all here, so let's get into it. First, we gotta start off with Apple ceasing to include chargers in the boxes of phones you just bought. So the reason, it helps cut down on costs and it saves the environment. So first off, yes, it's less expensive for Apple, but will the consumer be receiving a cheaper device? No. As well, I am all for saving the environment. We need to. And these companies need to do something because they have and continue to cause a large portion of the destruction that we're seeing. However, something about this just does not feel right to me. Yes, there is a pretty decent portion of people who just have a lightning charger just laying around their house somewhere, right? But not including something that is crucial to the device being able to function in the box, it just doesn't sit right with me and a lot of other people, especially when you just paid a lot of money for it. Also, Apple, let's not act like there aren't a million other ways besides including a charger that you're destroying the environment. I feel like there has to be, there has to be some other thing some other small thing that you can do, cut down on, stop doing that will minimize your environmental footprint a lot more than not including the charger. Also, there are rumors that other manufacturers are going to follow in Apple's footsteps and uh, I'm not surprised. 2020 is also definitely the year of notches or at least trying to like get around them in the ongoing quest to expand our phone screens closer to the edge and minimize those ugly bezels. Many phones these days have a little notch at the top, housing a camera, sensors, maybe an earpiece. Others like Samsung have opted for a hole punch camera, which takes up less space than a notch. Uh, needless to say, though, seeing things like this on new phones has become commonplace as we strive to one day have a full, completely uninterrupted screen. The main way of doing this would be to put the uh, camera under the display. And one company, ZTE, has actually done this very recently with their phone, the Axon 25G. The technology isn't perfect yet because there is some noticeable like distortion uh, where the camera is under the screen, but it's arguably less uh, distracting than a notch would be. We'll probably see this on some more like larger mainstream phones, maybe towards like the end of 2021. Speaking of smartphones, folding smartphones definitely established themselves a bit more this year. They bursted onto the scene last year, but in 2020, they seem to have started becoming a little more viable as like an actual daily driver. Uh, while I would say they are far from their full potential, we've had a few significant releases like the Razer from Motorola, the Z Flip and Galaxy Fold 2 from Samsung, and Huawei put out something as well. This year, as many people were indoors a lot more, streaming services had a big boom in viewership. Netflix is still on top though with the most paid subscribers, but there are plenty of other options out there including Disney Plus now, Hulu, Prime Video, uh, there's Peacock, and plenty of other smaller ones. There are also plenty of game streaming services with, I'm sure, more on the way. Uh, while the industry is getting its foothold, you have options such as Google Stadia, GeForce Now, Amazon Luna, Microsoft Cloud Gaming, and more. I think services like this can be more popular in the future as they definitely need to mature a bit more and internet speeds hopefully go up for everyone. On the opposite side of the spectrum, there has not been an abundance of newly released electronics, as I'm sure many of you are aware. Uh, with the release of the new PS5 and Xbox Series X, as well as with 30 series graphics card and more, these shortages are present due to multiple reasons. Of course, obviously we have coronavirus, which plays a large role. It has a lot more people staying at home, which leads to more people building PCs and just playing games in general. Also, there can be complications with the manufacturing side because of the virus shutting down plants, people having to, to call out sick and just random stuff like that. And there are also tons of degenerates with bots online that basically just snatch up huge portions of the stock before any normal people even get the chance to buy them. There's just a lot of factors. We also saw a huge hike in the podcast industry. Uh, there are now tons of podcasts from every single person on the planet, but there are most definitely some really good ones out there. I'm pretty sure every person uh, I know in like real life has their own podcast now. And it's funny because I actually talk about this in my upcoming podcast episode. Unless someone with a deep fake beats me to it. Deep fakes are by no means a product of this past year, but they have definitely been popping up a bit more. They are continuing to get better and more realistic as well as more accessible. And while it can be very scary because 
they already look pretty realistic if you put a lot of effort into it. There is also software being developed alongside this, which can help detect if a video is actually a deep fake. So hopefully we never reach a time where you, you can't even tell like what's real on the internet anymore. You know what is real though? TikTok taking over the internet. Uh, it was the second most downloaded app on iOS behind, of course, Zoom. And is, you know, TikTok probably like Chinese government-owned spyware? Yeah. Are myself and everyone else going to continue using it? Yeah. Another large force this year were food delivery apps. And yes, they are very convenient and can be very useful, but they also suck. They actually don't help out restaurants as much as you would think because the app just takes so much of the profit. As well, uh, the companies behind these apps are evil and greedy, like, well, every other company. They put tons of ads out and tried their very hardest to prevent their drivers from being treated as actual workers by preventing a certain proposition from passing, and it worked for them. Pretty sad. 2020 also served as a prevalent reminder of how easily misinformation can spread. When you have lots of not-so-well-informed middle-aged people on Facebook who take everything they see as fact, things can get a little screwy. Now more than ever, it's easy to just post something false or just misleading, and it gets spread through all the crevices of the internet because many people are either not fact-checking, they don't have the time, they don't care, or they're just not using common sense. At the end of the day, just make sure you look at issues from multiple perspectives and sources if possible. There was even some stupid misinformation about like 5G, which started rolling out this year. And uh, while 5G is very, very fast, odds are only a very small portion of you will actually get to take advantage of it. Uh, it's only active in a select amount of big cities and it only reaches a certain distance, like not even covering the whole city or like a decent portion, uh, just kind of like a, like a few blocks, like a very small area. And uh, service providers are doing their very best to make it look like it's covering way more than it is, and they are being pretty deceptive about it. USB Type-C has also continued to find its way into more devices and general consumer products, which is good compared to its associate, the micro USB port. USB-C looks better, it's easier to plug in since it's symmetrical on both the top and bottom, and it's faster. And speaking of USB-C, someone who will probably never switch to that, uh, at least for their phones, is Apple. In fact, it's very likely that they're going to remove the charging port off their phone altogether before they even, you know, go near USB-C. And notably, Apple this year also moved away from Intel and is now using its own processors in its desktops and laptops. The integration to their own ARM-based chips will result in overall better performance. If you watched YouTube at all this year, and I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb and uh, say you did, but uh, you might have noticed that videos were playing at a lower resolution right off the bat towards like the beginning and middle of the lockdowns. There was so much activity and usage of the servers that to cut down on everything, many people would have their videos auto playing at like 480p. Finally, electric cars also saw some good representation this year, as we saw the release of the Porsche Taycan, as well as many other large companies, making their debut into the electric scene. Overall, though, I think Tesla still remains supreme in this field, as their battery performance is pretty much better than anyone else, and their charging network is just so diverse, uh, nothing else really comes close to it at this moment. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you, if you despise it, if you hated it. Uh, subscribe if you want more stuff like this. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.